so first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I am Exa, and today I'll be talking about Web3 Capital Stack. Now, first of all, I just want to say that, you know, I want to provide or be as much value as possible. So aside from going over uh, what we do uh, here at Exponent product or the project, I want to make sure just to be able to give some perspective on where we think technology trend is going, where we think uh, capital and asset management is going in general. So it's just trying to be providing as much value as possible. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I'm the technical co-founder at Exponent. I actually joined crypto in uh, with the 2017 cohort. So got started developing decentralized applications. Previously worked on blockchain infrastructure layer, uh, and layer twos. Uh, but actually on a personal level, got my started in entering NFTs ecosystems in the early 2018 and also DeFi in the uh, 2019. So having seen both like the early day, the earliest days really of the two ecosystems that really like picked up steam over 2020 and of last year. Uh, I just want to say, you know, getting that perspective, uh, I feel like the direction that asset management and DAOs more broadly speaking is going is more or less is, is in the same stage of development. Uh, a lot of excitement and partially is why I started working on Exponent with my team that comes from both DeFi and traditional finance. Uh, so a really a lot of the same vibe and it's So maybe worth going back to basics a little bit here. Um, what, what I see as capital in Web3 and what really makes it different from traditional, traditional finance. So to me, it is, it is a convergence of social and financial capital. And most often you have like architectures that are either or. And for specifically for DAOs, uh, you're not just managing membership. You're not just managing social coordinations like forums, like on forums or uh, like guilds, but you're also managing assets. You're also managing real world value. And before Web3, formation of capital is highly intermediated, very slow, very, very cumbersome. But on a decentralized networks, however, formation of capital can be more fluid, be really dynamic and permissionless and free to innovate on top, which is like one of the biggest properties. Um, to me, it's also less prone to principal agent problems uh, faced by traditional finance, whereby we have uh, different incentive schemes that are misaligned. And so if you're broadly looking at the entire architecture, uh, the entire landscape for DAOs, we see different types of services. You see uh, investment DAOs that are focused on deploying capital into um, early stage projects and seed rounds. You have like grants that are, might be more focused on certain types of value. You have collectors DAOs that are focused on NFTs. Uh, the more, maybe the bigger DAOs that people are familiar with would be Uniswap, Aave, Yearn, uh, one of the biggest projects and biggest DAOs, biggest uh, assets in DeFi space. But also you have emergence of more uh, social DAOs, right? You have emergence of DAOs that are focused on a certain aspect. And of course, not, not shown here in this uh, creation by Hupa Trupa is creation of like a single purpose DAO that might be focused just on, uh, just on deploying capital to, to let's say buy the, the US constitution or buy or like spice data that are focusing on uh, buying a copy of Dune. Um, so all the different, any, all the variations you can see from uh, a formation of what a company can achieve, like a DAO can achieve as well. And the underlying theme here that I see is that all these DAOs are co coordination to specifically to allocate capital in order to achieve a certain types of mandates. And that's true across all of these different vertices. Um, if you're breaking down a generic uh, DAO architecture of what I would consider a monolithic DAO, you have existence of members, could be token holders. You have a place where they could be discuss discussing. Uh, they could be talking, having conversations. And this usually would happen on Discord, sometimes on Telegram channels or even a dedicated forum. But in the end, there has to be an execution. So you might coordinate on forums, but uh, actual end goal, there has to be an execution somewhere. Uh, and there has to be 
allocation of capital. And this generally happens on uh, contract platforms such as Aragon or Colony, or more so now uh, on platforms such as Gnosis Safe. So this is what we, this is more, I, I would say an immersion properties of DAOs. Um, no one specifically designed DAOs to be this way. It just happens to be the case. Um, and so this architecture, given how simple it is, is also plagued with problems or organizational problems. And so more importantly, uh, what's something I would consider like a scalability limits for DAOs. So structures itself, these structures have coordination limits. Um, there is a number called a Dunbar number, which is a, an es estimate of how many social relationships you can have. Uh, and it's usually at 150 people. And we haven't really seen DAOs that are much larger than a few uh, 100 people or a few hundred people. And so you have issues such as voters fatigue. Uh, you have issues where uh, voters don't, not enough voters show up to execute votes. Uh, you have voters that are maybe more uninformed than others and others that might be better fit to make these decisions. And this would all lead into really slow decision making process whereby it takes a really long time uh, to execute anything. And so we think the future of DAOs must resolve these coordination constraints, either reducing decision overhead or and or faster time to execution. I think that would be the metric for DAOs really uh, effectiveness of, effectiveness of DAOs going forward. And last but not least, being more informed about the decision that it is making. So providing a solution here to the way that I see DAO scales um, is in two folds. One is scaling vertically, uh, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. And this is quite typical to uh, software engineering or software products where you have like vertical and horizontal scaling. Uh, so breaking down first, what I mean by scaling vertically is that uh, in order to achieve more functions or being effective in uh, certain types of functions, you would add more direct reports. You would add more contributor accounts. Uh, you would add more numbers basically uh, to the problem and creating what is considered sub DAO pods or squads and naming convention can be different here. That'll focus on those specific functionality. And this is something that are already sort of emergent. And we are seeing more now in uh, FW, FWB or Vicar protocol DAOs. But what's interesting we haven't really seen is DAOs that scale horizontally, uh, whereby DAOs are integrating horizontally with other DAOs. There are inter-DAO integrations. Uh, this would, in fact, allow for DAOs to be smaller, to be more focused. And this is an emergent of what I would consider an access service DAOs or a DAO to DAO cooperations. So showing on the next slide here, uh, this is an excellent, excellent diagram from 1KX blog post. And it is a description of organization Legos. Uh, and it's, uh, if you haven't read the blog post already, I would recommend searching and reading through the post. Uh, and it proposed each functions operating as a sub DAO, where you could have PR, marketing, people, engineering, product. And as you can see here, this is reminiscent of real organizational functions. Now, this could be its own sub teams, but what's more importantly is something that we have seen is what if you totally outsource your people functionality, your HR or your community building or PR and marketing to uh, a certain DAO that are tightly focused and specialized in those specific areas. Now, I will put a focus on treasury here uh, because that's where uh, exponent is, is prioritizing. So similar to how organizations are run, uh, you could have a your treasury functionality be all uploaded to a third party service provider. And I think it's, at the end of the day, uh, all DAOs have mandates. And the decision tree really is, would you like to focus on your domain's uh, expertise versus focusing on uh, these operations that you see here? And so we see at Exponent three main models for organizations when we look at capital management. One, as I mentioned earlier, is dedicated sub -dials. Um, And there are a few key factors here to determine uh, what are the right models for each DAO. So one key factor is control. So whether or not a DAO 
fully retains its autonomy in making these decisions. Second is coordination cost, which is the cost of coordinating to reach a certain decision. And third is risk, whether financial, contract, or uh, even reputation. And based on these factors, each DAO may choose uh, different options. Um, if you are a really large DAO, a protocol DAOs, or a more mature project, then you might move towards maintaining full autonomy, full control in your decision-making process. And uh, there might be a lot of cost to afford a dedicated team for your functions, but that might be totally worth it for some DAOs. And now for exponent, I think these are the models that are underexplored and something that we're really excited about, which is uh, one is assisted uh, decision-making whereby Treasury decisions are still within the purview of control within the DAO's uh, core members. However, there are um, risk mitigations in place. Uh, there are elements that reduce this coordination cost. So that could be uh, assisted decision making, such as uh, a suggestion or uh, a way to easily queue up transactions to for the DAO to be fully operational. And more so. Even, even more so uh, on the end of the spectrum is a managed treasury service where a risk can be totally delegated to a third party service. Uh, and in this case, you are delegating control, but for in order to achieve really extremely low coordination costs and fully offloaded risk to a third party. And these two models here, I think for a treasury service are unexplored and it's something for us to be uh, really focused on and be really excited about over the next coming months. And now that leads to into what exactly is Exponent. Uh, at Exponent, we want to be the capital allocators DAO. So our focus is to build full suite of products, services that DAOs can leverage, that they can, whether it assists them to manage capital and make them uh, truly scalable, uh, even from a really early stage small DAOs into a mid-sized organizations. So if you are a DAO, perhaps you would need to outsource or you would need to deal with risk, risk map assessment or insight into your treasury. This is not something that everyone has full internal capabilities. You might need to look into managed portfolio, uh, managing your, actively manage your assets against volatility or diversify yourself against all the different types of risks that you might be exposed to, but uh, it's underreported. And of course, speaking of reporting, financial reporting and accounting is something that is a must. It's something that is like, hey, let's be honest, really boring, but it's a necessity in, in the traditional finance world. And it's something that isn't exactly utilized uh, or, or, or made prevalent in most of these early stage DAOs. And so we see this as a full capital as a service for treasury management solutions. And, you know, we are in maybe, maybe, I don't, know, I don't like to mention price a little bit too much, but having been through 2017, 2018, um, there are pain points that projects always find themselves in. And for some anecdotes, there are projects that raise all that capital in ETH in 2018. Uh, and then thinking about treasury management after the fact isn't ideal. And so for us, things like token treasury, how do you allocate those or how do you allocate and grow your liquid and operating capital? Uh, that's something that we put a lot of focus and put a lot of our expertise on. Um, you know, 2018 is during the down market is a product productive time to be discussing sound treasury management. And so for us, um, you know, as far as, as bad as the market is going over these past few days, um, the innovation around active asset management that reduces risk volatility uh, is something that this ecosystem really, really needs. Uh, I found a really good meme here that describes uh, some a lot of the concepts that we're trying to convey. And so you have a lot of governance functions and you have a lot of people that are focused on making uh, forum posts, making polls, trying to coordinate decisions. As you can see, all of this work is extremely, extremely important, but uh, it's extremely repetitive. And I think eventually, if we were to go away of DAOs, uh, sure, we need more uh, governors, but we also need more a uh, horizontal scaling. You need more treasury services now that provide these functions. And so moving on to 
the products that we have. Uh, we've actually deployed our first vault as a pilot product. Uh, it's called XE, which puts a lot of focus on ETH accumulations. And so main strategies is to be a 60-40 portfolio from uh, keeping 60% uh, ETH as a capital asset and 40% stable coins. Uh, it is aimed to grow stable coins holding to fund operations and salary, something that all the protocols need, but doesn't have time to constantly be allocating, as well as accumulating ETH to cover all the on-chain activities over time, such as smart contract, uh, deployment, transaction costs, payment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the risk is really aimed to be like really minimal. Um, we still experiment with the pilot product, uh, the tr tr trades on decentralized exchanges, and seeing how the functionalities go. And so far, it's been successful. Uh, applications have totally worked. And of course, forgot to mention, can't forget to mention that we've developed on top of Enzyme. Uh, this is pre-Sulu, so all the functionality, functionalities are limited as far as pilot product goes. We can trade on decentralized exchanges using Sulu integration, as well as integrating with Lido, Aave, and Yearn for extra yield on these stable coins. And so just to echo uh, one of sentiment earlier, I think I see Exponent as a service building vaults and applications on top of um, Enzyme asset management, Enzyme uh, operating system. Uh, in the future is something I'm really excited about uh, with more products, services in the pipeline. I think the DAOs and the governance meta is gonna be a really big theme in 2022. So we aim for treasury partners. So really looking forward to see what the integrations with Sulu in the next set of vaults can enable for us. Uh, we have a ton of ideas for more complex strategies that revolve around uh, DeFi protocols or series of DeFi protocols that will be enabled through integration with Ensign. So the next version of the vault is you know, to, to focus on us developing more integrations and adapters on top of Sulu. Um, at the end of the day, I think it'd be, we think that uh, our thesis is that developers should really design for most amount of flexibility, thinking about time to market, but also not having to build applications from scratch. Uh, it's 2022, I don't think the smart contract developers should be trying to rebuild your from scratch anymore. And as we search for solutions, I think that Enzyme Sulu architecture is the right product perspective where, where DeFi applications and architecture should really go. So really excited to build new vaults and new uh, strategies on top of Enzyme Sulu. Aside from that being a full uh, service DAOs, uh, we have more bespoke treasury services in the pipeline, uh, currently under design stage right now, but would love to talk to more DAO, DAO protocols, protocol DAOs, um, and different groups of people and organizations that are looking to break into the DAO ecosystems. Um, and so with that, I will leave uh, with the um, where we are. So if you are uh, a DAO, we'd love to talk to you uh, about whether asset management and treasury, and you're really trying to provide as much value as possible and together scale social coordination and capital coordination. Uh, we're also looking to grow as a project uh, as far as our community in the future. So if you are in joined in some community already, please follow us on Twitter, join our Discord. Uh, we're planning to be more active in Q1 2022. And I want to finish with you know the sentiment that I would like to, that I said earlier on this call, that DAOs and active asset management, this co capital coordination meta feels to me like an early days of NFTs, the early days of DeFi. And so, yeah, excited to be on this journey with all of you. And of course, shout out to the Exponent team uh, who helps me make this presentation possible.